This has been in the oven for, honestly, about an hour. You know what I always say? Good puff pastry should make a mess. Yeah. yeah. Like, it, it should be all over you. Seth, hello. Hi. What are we doing today? So we're gonna make puff pastry, but we're gonna make inverse puff pastry. Normally, when you're making puff, you'd roll out your dough, you take your butter package, you put it in the middle, and you'd fold the dough over it and like that. Here, we're doing the opposite, inverse style. Also, we're gonna make it all by hand because we don't really have very many machines. Yeah, so it's gonna be basically just pieces of wood on a wooden table. I literally am so excited to see you do this only because it's been like a, some sort of pastry legend. Oh, pastry by hand, can it be done? How much longer do you think it takes to do it by hand than with, if you had a sheeter? It's not exceptionally much longer. We've gotten to the point where bang it out and it, it goes pretty quickly. The other thing I've also heard is that inverse puff pastry is almost better for filled laminated doughs. I find it's true. I feel A, it gets crispier on the outside because the entire thing is basically smeared with butter and then fries from the outside yeah. in. And we do definitely get a lot of nice lift to it with some nice, very definitive layers in between. First step, so we need to make the butter portion and the dough portion. Uh, just butter, and this is bread flour. Um, and we just basically pile it together until it's smooth, and then we'll spread it out. So. We're gonna do it all basically in one day, but what we, what we make today will be a three-day process or so. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Because it's just so much chilling and then re-rolling and then chilling and re-rolling. I'm just trying to get the butter and flour smooth, but I'm trying not to actually aerate it too much. So if it's got too light, too white in color, it'd have too much air mixed into it, and then it wouldn't be plastic, it wouldn't be flexible. How do you fix that? You don't. This will be the basis that we're gonna wrap around our dough. So this is considered the butter block? This is the butter block, okay. which in regular puff pastry, non-inverse puff pastry, this would go on the inside. In a lot of cases, that would just be pure butter. So we'll put this in the fridge, and then we'll make the dough. Mmm, butter, flour. Oh, but it's kinda good. <laughs> we're gonna take more bread flour, a little bit of salt. I add vinegar. I like to add acid to some of my kind of makes it a little bit stretchier, which gives it a little bit easier to fold. And also, the end result is a little bit more flaky. It's definitely one of those things that like grandmas would do, where it's yeah. like, oh yeah, you add a little bit to your pie crust, and then for some reason, generations stop doing it. I don't know why. I don't why. know why. Probably the smell. The They're smell. just like, you know. And then I like to add a vanilla bean to the dough, and then ice water, and then we'll add some butter towards the end. So this is gonna go for a while at high speed. Wow, uh, most mixers say do not put the dough hook beyond stir speed. Oh. I think, I mean, if you want, we can, <gasps> yeah, yeah, we're crazy. You can't oh, stop us. poor mixer. It is very wet, oh. but it will firm up overnight when we put it in the fridge. Oh my God, we have to wait overnight? Yes time passes. Oh my gosh. Or at least several hours because A, we want it to rest and relax. Yeah. B, we want the flour to absorb all the moisture. These both rested overnight in the fridge. So we have the dough portion, which is now a lot firmer. We're gonna basically just start forming this to fit onto the butter package. Does slapping it help? <laughs> Is that the technical? Now uh, I'm going to be self conscious of that, you know. <laughs> um, and so now we take our butter pack. Look at that color contrast. Yeah. Like I said, you know, usually people are like, oh, butter's white. It's like, mm. I mean, this one is definitely a more of a brownish yellow color. But the end result we're really looking for is just layers of dough and butter, dough and butter. Here, I mean, you can't see the dough coming through, but after we do a couple folds, you'll start seeing the vanilla bean speaking through. I don't think a lot of pastry chefs are doing this by hand. So either you're buying puff pastry if you don't have a dough sheeter, or you have a dough sheeter. Which again, if we had a dough sheeter, in this stage it's so delicate, temperamental, that I wouldn't trust it to a machine. So you're actually making classic, the most classic desserts here. We try to. True. That's, what, that's what I think is more exciting to us. A lot of times I'll go to all the great cookbook stores here in New York City. And I like to go searching and I look at the copyright page and if it says uh, copyright 1958, I'm like, perfect. And then if it's in French, I'm like, even, even better. better. 
And then if you, in my minimal kitchen French, if the recipe is like, go to the hen house and gather an egg, you're like, that's the one I want. Yeah, take a handful of sugar and you're like, all right, we're gonna figure this one out. But yeah, so there's our first fold. And now we can put it in the fridge and chill it. It's chilled for how long? Depends on the weather, which is annoying yes. when it's a Excellent answer. 80 degree day. There's and no humidity. definite number. This has been chilling. This has only had one fold on it. So now we're gonna turn it 90 degrees. How important do you think it is for restaurants to have an actual pastry team that are actually doing dishes like this? Again, it's if you need that, if you wanna to get to that next level. With pastry, with the end of the meal, we're bringing them something sweet. But a lot of times our department is not bringing in money. We're bringing in that extra special something. We're making it so from a really good restaurant to a great restaurant. They're the two schools I feel of pastry these days, especially in New York City. There's the ice cream sundae, mm -hmm. which food critics in town have besmirched the name of the ice cream sundae because it will just be, well, all we do is a sundae. Or, yeah, this new Nordic dessert, which is beautiful earthenware bowl with some sort of cream, and it's just a mess in a bowl, which might be delicious, but there's no skill to it. Two folds now. We can put one more on it now. Oh, right now? Yeah. And then we chill it again. Okay. Last. Last one. Is there anything different about this round? No, exactly the same. What's that speckle? Vanilla bean. Why'd you take it out? Because well, you, you called attention to it. <laughs> All right, so we'll chill this. Feels sore. Look, look, so shredded. My shirt's just ripping at the edge. <laughs> Our puff has been rolled, sheeted, chilled. Now we cut it and then we bake it. I mean, it's autumn right now, so we'll make a roasted apple milk boy. Some roasted apples, some puff pastry, a little bit of uh, whipped cream in there as well, maybe creme legere. We're just gonna cut it into a strip okay. and then throw it in the oven okay. and then bake it off. Oh my God. Yeah. So. It's so flaky. So these are apples that we cooked in the style of tarte de Basically, we made a tarte de without the puff pastry on top. So we took sugar, we caramelized it, we had butter to it, and then we just roasted the apples in it. So it's almost the same as like when you test a creme brulee, where you're like, crack. There you go. Like this is why you always save room for dessert. Desserts like this are worth waiting for. Thank you for letting me into your kitchen. Great having you here, and uh, I'm glad I got to show you how to make puppies. To watch more episodes, click here.